scopes. Yeah. What does what does this wheel do? Oh. I need, I need, I'm reversing on this, yeah. I need to have good side view here. <laughs> <laughs> you can start. Right, let's start. So here we go, the scope. The scope itself is split into three sections, yeah? So we have the control unit, umbilical, and the insertion tube, yeah? Does everybody use Olympus scopes? Olympus? Yes. Olympus? Everybody? Olympus? Great. So when we've got the scope in our hands, I ignore this bit. Let's look at this. What does the, the big wheel do? Up and, up and down. So I'm pulling it back. So what should that do? If I pull this this way, what will that do? So why is it going down? Well, when you look at the screen, if you look at the screen, if you look at the screen, you're looking at me. So when I pull this back, it goes up. So why is that? I put it to the side. It looks to the side. What's it doing on the screen? still going up but it's going to the side Left and right. but it's going up and down on the screen so what I wanted to show you is, is is that on the screen we always like to have the maximum where we're actually looking where the lumen is we're always wanting it at 12 o'clock so regardless of the orientation of the scope outside the patient will see it looking down Outside the patient will see it looking to the left. But on the screen is what we're reacting to. We can't see that. But all we know is, is that it's going the direction. So ignore this. But as long as you have an idea what it's doing. Doesn't matter if it's looking here. Doesn't matter if it's looking there. It's always going to go up and down. Right? The reason why we want it to go up and down is this. When the large wheel is pulled back, it will angulate. And it should angulate to 187 degrees. If we actually introduce a little bit of the angulation with the little wheel, it will then angulate even more. Okay? If we actually push the big wheel forward, it will only go 97 degrees. The most important thing to know about this is, regardless what's happening, we've got a neutral scope now. So if I've got it here, it's going up so you understand it's going up. If I want to look to the right, I do a, a clockwise torque. If I want to look to the left, I'll do an anti-clockwise torque. Now, if I now on the screen go angulate and it goes down, which it has done, I now look to the right on the screen, it looks to the left. I now look and on the screen it goes, so I know actually what's happening to the scope. I know where the tip is. That's very important to remember because when it goes the opposite direction, it means the tip is down. And then you have to then be able to adjust what you're doing accordingly. Happy with that? Or do you want me to go over it again? Can you go over it? So, when the big wheel is back yeah. and neutral, so slightly on the neutral, if I go clockwise torque on the screen, it'll look to the right. Anticlockwise, it'll look to the left. Same here now. If I big wheel back, even though it's gone up on the screen, if I go clockwise torque, because the tip is down, it'll go to the left. Anticlockwise, it'll go to the right. Yeah? So a lot of people then get confused. Why is it doing what it's doing? I cannot understand why it's looking to the left when I'm putting clockwise torque on. And it's because of the position of the tip of the scope. Even though you're looking up, maybe in that position, it wants to go left, wants to go right. So it helps you to understand the concept of torque steering. Yeah. Torque steering. 
hold the scope, just hold the scope. Hand, ah, uh ah, -uh. uh -uh. great, hold the scope. So Torx did, hold it tight, hold it tight. Drop your hand so I can actually hold it tight. So Torx did, hold it tight. Have you got it tight? Think it's 50 pound in your hand and I want to have it. <laughs> tight. That's tight. Now you're not letting me move it, yeah? So I can't put the torque on. Think it's 50 pound and you don't want me to have it. How much torque is there? I can move them if 50 pound. Yeah? And that is supported by this. So now relax the hand, just hold it still. So when we talk steering, we want to put a little bit of torque on. Watch the scope here. What's the scope doing as we want to put torque on? I want to put clockwise torque on the scope. What is the scope doing? It's moving. Where? It's moving, right. it's moving here? It's moving where else? Yeah. Head is moving. Head is moving. But what else is happening with the scope? Okay, so I want to put torque steering on. See how much torque I'm putting on. So why, what's happening here? What's happening with the scope? Excellent, so what's happening? Loop. No loop, forget loops. We're asking you what's happening with the scope. Look, look at the color of the thumbnail. I picked the scope up. Look at the color of the thumbnail. Can you see the thumbnail now come pink? I no longer have to grip it. If I put this down. So you just hold the scope there. Hold the scope between your fingers. See how loosely that feels? Right? I'm just putting this down. How does that no, feel? Relax. No, I don't want you to relax. Yeah. I want you to put a lot of torque on. A lot more, a lot more. No, not, not with your wrist. Hold the scope here and bring it round. Go on, keep going. Keep going. How does that feel? What is it? How does that feel? More relaxed. How does it feel? A little bit better. Okay. How does it feel now? Not relaxed. Not completely. Not complete. Not Your thumb is white. Yeah. I bring it here. It'll go pink. No. So a lot of people, what you've got is you've got a scope itself. Think of a snowshoe. A snowshoe covers a big s space and it forces into the bed. So I want to go anti-clockwise. Hold the scope again. Hold it there in your hand. Put some anti-clockwise torque in the scope. That's clockwise. Anti-clockwise. How does that feel? Right. So what you're doing is that you're actually breaking your wrist to come round. Don't break your wrist to come round. Hold the scope and rotate it. If you break your wrist to come round, you're actually not increasing the torque. Watch what happens to the torque here. Uh, I'm going to go the way you did, there. Now as I bring it round and straight, look at the 40. Look at the scope itself. It will actually come, as I take it off, the torque comes off. As I come in, the torque comes on. So you keep it in a straight line. So, yeah, try again. Anti-clockwise. Again, keep it in a straight line. To there, keep it going. How does that feel? Rigid. Keep it on. Keep it on. How does it feel? Not getting relaxed. How does it feel? A little bit stiff. How does it feel? Stiff. Okay. So what's happening is you force it. Keep the torque on. Keep it on. You're letting it go, and keep it straight. Keep it straight. Keep the torque on and keep it straight. So it feels stiff. So what you're forcing in is all this into the bed. If you do this to the scope, how does it feel now? Getting stiff. Stiff? Let go of this. So put your torque on as much as you can, whichever direction you want to go. Torque? Torque, whichever way you want to go. Go on, you're letting your thumb roll. Go on, put it on. Put it on as hard as you can. Yeah. You did nothing. I couldn't see the 50 move. So make the 50 rotate by 90 degrees. Rotate the scope. Rotate the scope. I you can't. You can't. Why? No. See, it's not rotating. Okay, so what should you do? It's a stiff. But how are you going to make it rotate? Because you want to put clockwise torque on. Go on, no. keep it on. Go on, keep it on. 
If I do that, how does that feel? No, it's okay. Yeah. So what we're showing you, has anyone ever shown you that? So watch the tip of the scope. The tip of the scope is there. That, this is only just to show you what's happening. What she was trying to do was put torque on the scope. Can you see? And the torque couldn't come on. Look at it. I can make it do. And everybody keeps this hand still. Yeah? Now, just to show you, if you get the hand and you just rotate the scope, the scope will rotate. Yeah. Whichever way you want to go. You can increase that and decrease it. Putting the hands close together takes it off. Keeping the hands apart increases it. When you want to put clockwise torque on, don't start with your thumb at 12 o'clock. Start with your thumb at 6. Apply the torque. Now we've moved. So we've got it here. Thumb at 6, rotate to 12. It's now gone how many degrees? Bring the scope here, it'll stay. Put the scope back, it'll go back to where it was. So come here, bring here, thumb at 6, rotate and bring round. How many degrees? 360 plus. So the torque steering that you can apply is quite easy. When you actually put your thumb, so when you're going to apply torque steering, I want to go anti-clockwise. Thumb, wrist, bring it round. It's very stiff. Hold the scope, point the buttons over here, scope can come round. Bring it back. Yeah? So torque steering, easy to apply, and it's all dependent. So I hold the scope here. I want to put clockwise torque on. If you watch the screen, clockwise torque is that I look that way. I want to put anti-clockwise, I look that way. So whichever way you look, as long as you keep the, the hilt static, it will go the way you want to go. I want to look right, it'll look right. I want to look left, it'll look left. I want to increase it, a step back. I want to decrease it, a step forward. Further away, further in, closer. All of these will actually have an effect. The reason why I'm telling you this, as a trainee and as a person who's doing it, how many people do you see do this over the patient? How many? Lots. Stand upright, look at your posture. Posture is very, very important. So what I'll be doing is making you stand up straight. So I'll be saying shoulders, back, keep yourself forward. Young man, young man, young man. Me and you are a little bit older, doesn't matter. Okay. Do we ever use these? Yeah, locks. Do you know anybody who uses the locks? That's a question. Have you ever seen them used? You don't use them in... So why are they there? Sometimes uh, uh, when we're doing the biopsy and it's a, you know, smooth move, you know, lock and tear position, pass the snare. Right. So I pass the snare. What happens is when you're passing the snare, is that you'll do this. And then the scope moves. Then it drops back. You'll lean forward. You'll come in. The thing about doing anything with the scope is is that you just have to manipulate what you want to do with the scope itself. Yeah. So the scope, when you're doing this, putting the locks on, I never use the locks. The locks, what they do, is, is that they make the scope very stiff. Right? Very stiff indeed. It won't move. If you cannot manipulate your scope with the locks off, it will still stay. That allows it to actually have some movement with the bowel, so don't worry about the locks. What's this? What's this? So what do we do with it? We can inflate. Yeah. How? Okay. And what happens when you press it? Water comes up. Where? What? What does the water do? Lens wash. Okay. Well, we are connected. Right. 
So, we take this out. So if it's not blowing, always take it out. What happens if you see a lot of bubbles coming on there and a, lot of, a little bit of water every now and again? What do you do? But it keeps coming. What do you think? There is a problem. But what is there a problem with? What's there a problem with? Suction. No suction. So the, you pick up the scope and it's dripping. Yeah. So what's the problem? The bottle, did you say? So I pick this up and there's a problem with the suction channel, is that what you're saying? No, no. Okay. No, no. So what is it? Water is dripping from this side, right? That's the question. But you were quite adamant, no, no. So what's the what's the answer? No, it's not properly working. Out. There no water now. Okay, I take this out. I put it back in, and it still happens. What's the problem? The channel might be blocked, and insufflation. But there's water coming out. It can't be blocked. Insufflation is not working. Water bottle is not. But there's water coming out, so it's right. nothing to do with the water bottle. The pump is actually pumps air into this. The little pipe allows the water to come up. You put your finger over this, it actually stops the air. The hissing that you see is air escaping. You actually cover that, it stops the air escaping and it pushes it down the air water channel. Water's dripping out of the end here, so it's actually pushing water out of the tip of the scope down the air water channel, so it's not blocked. So what's the problem? Cover this, air will come out. So what's the problem? The reason why I get you to do this is that you need to be aware of your equipment. You shouldn't be using... Would you get in a car that was leaning over to one side and dip down to the front and drive it? What could be the problem? If a car is... You get back to your car and your car is now shaped like this. What could be the problem? Suspension. Suspension. That's one. So you know there's something wrong with it. Would you drive it? No. no. Could be a wheel missing. Could be a flat tyre. You wouldn't drive a car because it would be, what? Unsafe. Why would you use a scope if your view is impaired? So what I'm saying to you is, if you can't see clearly where you're going, you need to rectify it. So if there's water dripping out of the end of the scope, what do you think is the problem? I pick the scope up and there's water dripping from the scope. I put the scope in the patient and you can see water coming on there. It happens all the time. So what's the problem? The problem is, is that the rubbers on the actual button become stiff. Why do they become stiff and even split? Split because you keep putting them in and out, but why do they become stiff? Oil is not, not silicon oil. Why do they become stiff over time? This is a brand new scope, so that's nice and soft. Yeah. Okay? But why do they become stiff? No. They become stiff because of how you clean them and put them in glutaraldehyde, and that actually stiffens the rubbers and they become a little bit harder. Silicon oil is a temp will actually only smooth the way it goes. If you pick this up and then you put it in a little bit of the gel, that's there, and put it back in, it'll stop the leaking on the screen. But because it's a water-soluble lotion, it won't last very long. Silicon won't last very long, it'll wash away. But the gel that you put it in will actually form a seal, and that'll form an airtight seal around there. Okay? So what I'm trying to get you to do is look at your piece of equipment and resolve. The scope is blowing. So the scope is blowing, but nothing's insufflating. What can be the problem? The scope is blowing. I've got the scope in the bowel. And nothing's insufflating. What can be the problem? Channel is blocked. Maybe air is 
The scope is blowing. Nothing is insufflating. So what can be the problem? The scope is blowing. So what can be the problem? The scope is still blowing. So I get my hand, <laughs> it'll still blow. The problem is here because, you know, we... The scope is blowing. Well, yeah, you're quite right. There is a problem with the scope. Not quite. The scope is blowing and the bowel is not insufflating. What can be the problem? Your channel is blocked. This channel is Or it can be old and what air can seep out. First thing you do, put your hand on there, finger on there, finger on here and see what happens. Yeah? You need to fix your scope. You need to know what's going on. If that doesn't, if that's not the right thing, then work out, then say, right, the scope's not blowing. It can be a lot of, I can't feel it, nothing's happening. So we've got a scope. We've got a patient. Patients, normally we start in the left lateral. Can you see the bowel? I put the air in. What's happening to the bowel? What is? What is? What part of the bowel? Excellent. So, where am I at the moment with the scope? And is the rectum dilated up enough to go through? No, not really. So I want more air. Would that be correct? Look what's filling up first. So in the left lateral, air does what? Infects the cecum. Why? Release resistance, where's the air going? Why? Highest point. There is no trick questions. A lot of you are starting to look and start to think, how is he going to trick me? I'm not here to trick you. Okay, let's put the patient in the right lateral. Let's see what happens. The cecum starts to deflate. And look here. Naturally. So if I was to say to you, right, what is the optimal position to have a patient in? What's the best position to have the patient in if you can't interflate the left colon if you're having difficulty and the patient's got pain to negotiate the sigmoid? It would be the right lateral. Look at this now and look at this in comparison. Yeah? So what I want you to do there is for you to see how quickly... So let's have a look. How quickly. Let's pop the scope just here. Let's just make the person grip down on the scope. That's gripping down on the scope. Let's let some air out before we do anything else. So we've let the air out. Let's put the person in the left lateral. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What's filling up first? 13, 14, what's not filled up yet? 18, 19, and how many of you would be in the cecum in 18, 20 seconds? No one. No one, okay. How many of you would be through the sigmoid in 18, 20 seconds? How much air have we already put in that's distending this part of the bowel? So what I'm saying to you is, we've got to be guarded about how much air we put in. We've got to be careful. Air is needed, but what could actually help us is when the patient gets discomfort, if we actually put the person into the 
supine position, look at that, how it actually just lays out uniformly. So we can put more air in. Now look at it, it's filling there, but it's not distending here. So we can negotiate. Yeah? So scoping. Everybody happy with that so far? Yeah. Right. I've had one yes. Everybody? Anything you want me to go over? Anything you want me to go over? No, you look very serious, man. Why are you so serious? I'm not asking you to get married or anything. You know, let's, let's chill. Let's be happy. Scopes, they form all sorts of loops. What's this? Huh? What did you call it? Good man. What do you call it? Sharp loop. But what is this? Okay. What is this? Gamma loop. Okay. What is it? Loop. Good man. What is this? Well, normally they call it what? What shape is it? For someone who's read the books and you're going alpha loop, gamma loop, that's an end loop. Yeah. So, what's that? Go on, stick with what you've been saying. Loop. Loop, good man. Not belittling you. I don't give a hoot whether it's alpha, gamma, beta, n loop or anything. Right? What I want you to do is do me a favour. Put your feet on that line there. On the line, toes on the line. So that's it, good man. Now we've got the scope. Hold that in your hand. Hold that in your hand. This is in the patient, and you've got the loop, right? So you stood there, okay? Reduce the loop. By this hand? Yeah, that's how you normally reduce it. Okay, now advance the scope. Would you do that? No, you wouldn't do that. Let's do it again. So reduce the loop. And then what would you do? Advance the scope. Go on then. Advance the scope, you said. Okay. So how many of you do what he's done? Stand there and do that. Okay. Now, let's do it again. Now, close your eyes. Osama's not going to let you hit anything. Slowly take the loop out and walk backwards. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. Great, stop. Open your eyes. How far are you away from that line? A lot. How many of you withdraw that amount of scope? What I want you to do is now you can see outside the patient how much you have to draw back to have a straight scope. So in walking back, you can see what we don't walk back. So what you've got there is a concept, an idea in your head how much you have to draw out. We actually self-limit. So if we bring the scope here. So I have a loop. This is easy. See it? It's no trick. Scope is here. I have a loop. Scope wants to go forward. Yeah? Scope is looping. Yeah? Can you see it? No trick. No trick. Yeah? I then get the loop, I actually apply, watch the thumb, anti-clockwise torque, bring the scope back, keep the torque on. What's the scope doing? I let go of the torque. What's the scope doing, even though I'm going in the same direction? So, put your hands up. Do that. Let me pop it in. How does that feel? Yeah, don't have to grip it too tight. 
that's it. Now feel it as I do this, as I do this, and then do that. How does that feel? Stiffer. How does it feel now? Stiffer. No, no, relax. So when we let the torque go, so what am I actually saying to you to do? To go forwards, we have to stiffen the torque more. No, when you reduce your loop. So I've reduced the loop, I've applied the torque. Where I've finished, I then advance with that torque. If I let go of the torque, the loop will form again. The loop will form again. So this anti-clockwise motion does it. Doesn't matter if it's anti-clockwise, watch. Here we go again. I apply clockwise torque. See the scope step forward? I then apply. Let go of that and then it'll do that. So when we actually reduce with torque, we have where we've finished, we then continue with that torque in. So in other words, watch the thumb. Watch the thumb. I come back, the torque is now with the thumb at five. I go forward. Yeah, I let go of it, even though the thumb is there. So you've always got to keep, so whatever you end up with your thumb, you then go forward with your thumb, yeah? So torque steering is quite simple when you look at it in that sense. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Happy? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Nobody's smiling, go on, ask a question. It's a loop. It's a loop, is this the only way, uh, you know, you can de loop a loop? In what way? Is it the only way? Well, how else would you want to do? Hold the scope. Just there. So we've got a loop in the scope. So you're saying, yeah. if I've got a loop in the scope, is that the only way? What I can do is I can apply the torque. Now see how much space that takes up, right? So as I draw back, I take up less space. I increase and I take up less space. Yeah? I then bring back, keep the torque, see this scope here? Now, the re if I actually allowed that, it would then reform. If I keep my hand down here, it won't reform. The scope will stay stiff. And that's why I hold this in that format. Yeah? Do What's my name? Good man. Paul. I've not been knighted. Paul. Paul. So what do you want to know? How would we know during colonoscopy that uh, loop has been completely reduced? If you advance the scope and it reforms, then you haven't done it. Okay. So when we put the scope in, so we'll have the light on now. Oh, yeah, you're going to put some on that. Lovely man. This is Eric. Scopes. The buttons. You've got letters on them. Letters on them, keep them neutralized. 10 to 2 position all the time. Thumb. Anything that you do with a scope, it's slowly. So when we want you to do something, it's slowly. Not too slow that I grow a beard, but slowly, okay? I want to rotate the scope, I want it to look right. See the scope? I am not doing anything with the wheels. I want it to look up. See the scope? I want it to look left. I want it to look right. So far I've not done anything with the scope. I haven't advanced it. I haven't done nothing. Yeah? So doing a scope, you can actually do a lot of things with. So if you just look, see the screen there behind you. Now as we come through, we've got three folds in the rectum. One, two and three, both roughly at five centimeters apart. Do we know what they're called? Who's a surgeon? Who's a surgeon? <laughs> so what's the folds called in the rectum? Yeah, but valves of Houston. Valves of Houston. Yeah. The, f the last fold, the closest to the anus, that helps with regards uh, pressure, and it actually stops. And if you, actually, you need to look up these folds. Look up the valves of Houston. Very important because that helps you about your anal physiology. Also helps you about how patients feel and get stimulated when you're actually doing colonoscopy. But in particular the first one. 
So when we actually want to go forward, look at the scope, anti-clockwise, have I done anything but the scope? What have I done but the scope and the wheels? Nothing. I have adjusted my position. I'll get the scope forward, the scope comes back. You can actually hold the scope in your hand. It sticks a little bit because it's a mannequin. Clockwise torque, let the scope go forward. No air, you can see the little bit of liquid. Do we aspirate it? No. Do we go forward? Yes. The clunkiness is because there's a little, not enough lubricant, but don't worry about that. It's a mannequin. I'm not putting any air in at the moment. See the fold? See that fold? Right. Now here comes one for you. Who wants to look stupid? Osama, of course he does. Stand up. Osama, just stand here for us, matey. Come round here. Now you're all going to think, what an aider. Can you look at the screen? Look at the screen. Look at the screen. Can you see the screen, Osama? Yeah. Can you see? Now can you see that fold? As I go forward, I catch that fold and I press it. Can you see it? Catch that fold and I press it. I then lose the image of the fold, but I still go forward and it still causes a problem. It still pushes forward. Why? So, Osama, do me a favour. Get one hand, right, this finger and this finger. Put them in your eye line and the first one, raise it right next to your nose and raise this one until you can't see it, but keep looking straight at me. The finger itself. Okay, that's brilliant close to there. That's mm -hmm. good. Now lower this one till you can't see it. Yeah. So can you not down? Yeah. Right. So if you look here, this is the face of the scope. If you look, the top of the scope is going to catch that. The actual lens is in proportion. His eyes are in proportion. But the actual lens is offset. The camera is offset. So what it picks up, it's an offset image. So because his eyes, his chin in the effect of there would be lower, he would actually catch it. So when you're actually going forward with the scope, just because that fold is out of view, doesn't mean it's out of view. Your scope is going to catch. So you have to duck your head to lift up. Yeah. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah? So have a thing. When you go home, you'll start doing this now, and you'll start thinking, all right, understand. Have a think about it. Get your fingers so they're close to your face till the fingers disappear. Then you'll get a concept of what the scope will do. Goes down, up, down, through. Yeah? That's where a lot of people go wrong. You see the lumen, but you can't go forward. The folds are being pushed. Yeah? So, if we can see again. You're a handsome man, but I can't see through you. Right, come back with the scope. Buttons to the floor. Tip up. Buttons down, clockwise torque. See the torque? See the hand? The scope is staying straight. Can you do the torque? Okay. What do you want? Torque. Look at this. You are yeah. not interested in any area where the anchor is. This is a mannequin, so you don't need to too put too much air in. So when you're coming around, can you see the scope? It's trapped under. See there? And a lot of you, ah, oh, it's stiff, it's stiff. It's not, it's how you got the scope. I knew it was that, so pull the scope forward, keep it still, and allow the scope to come round. Bring your hand up, so now the scope has gone clockwise tall. Yeah? See that fold? Remember the fingers? Yeah. I need to go further away from it, and then anti-clockwise to move the fold. See the fold? It's still not gone away. And then anti-clockwise to move it away. Again. Don't, don't anti up clockwise. Mm -hmm doesn't matter which, what I'm saying to you is anti-clockwise. So far I've not touched the little wheel. Big wheel back, let the scope look, and as you go forward, and wait. Now when you've got a patient, you'll find that they, they actually do have skin over their abdomen. And you'll see here, this will stop. But can you see how it's actually going straight? If we actually put the cover back on, it would actually go forward. Now we just wait, wait, wait. If you wanted some air, you could put some in. Anti-clockwise, slowly draw the scope back. This is quite dry, this, my friend. Have we got any lubricant whatsoever for the scope, boss? Because that is so dry. Okay. Lubricant. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
brilliant. What have I done? Anybody want to shake hands with me? What am I doing? What am I showing you that you can do? With the scope. Say again. I've already done it, but what am I showing you what you can do? Anybody want to shake hands with me? You want to shake hands with me? No, why? So why do you guys get a glove and use one of these? When I've just shown you that I've got lubricant all over my fingers and I can apply torque steering. Why? Okay, why does your boss then use the cloth? Take out you who's not had as much experience as your boss. Because your boss will tell you he wants to grip the scope, it gives him yeah. a better grip. But I've just shown you, I've got rubbish on my fingers, that you can actually still have a good grip on the scope. Why? Boss. <laughs> Shh, you're on camera. <laughs> you're on camera. Right, patience on the back. So the first point we've come to where the scope is sticking. Okay. See where we are on the splenic. Okay. If we actually do an anti-clockwise torque, the scope will actually go posterior, the tip. Anti-clockwise torque will do what to the tip of the scope? See it? Can you do it again? Because of the, how the scope is looking on there, where would we want to go? We want to go clockwise, don't we, on there? Because it's clockwise. Yeah. If we go clockwise, when the scope goes forward, it will actually take the scope posteriorly. If you look, see there now? Watch the scope. See it? It starts to knuckle out there, and then it starts to come here, and look at the scope, pushing here, backwards, posteriorly. Yeah? If we come back, and then I t get you to do this, where we'll rotate the scope in this direction. Go forward with the scope, and as it comes round the splenic fletcher, it tries to bring the scope anteriorly. See it? That reduces the risk to the patient. See now it's not pushing back. And as we pull back, the scope will step forward. As it steps forward, it then lifts the mid transverse. Watching the screen won't show you what's happening in the abdomen. Watching the screen won't show you what's happening in the abdomen. You need to watch, see what it's done? So it pulls this down, and that's by coming anteriorly. If you go posteriorly, what happens is, is that the apex of the scope disappears underneath the spleen, causing lots of problems. If you get this bit right, this is a mannequin, but if you get this bit right, the rest of it follows. Not a problem. So I'm not going to go any further, all right? I'm not not interested in you getting all the way around. I'm interested in you getting this bit right. I'm interested in seeing how you handle the scope. Yeah? Uh, can you show again how you uh, manage the forging the rectum? Right. This, this big thing. This big thing. Yeah. Ah, right. So that's not actually the rectum. That's the rectosigmoid. Mm -hmm. So when we're coming around, See the scope? I'm pointing the buttons to the floor. Draw the scope back. If you look there, you can see where the scope wants to go. Tip up and let the scope now come round. As it comes round, I now let the scope come back and sit on the bed. As it sits on the bed, the scope itself comes round and straightens. As it straightens, I then come anti-clockwise, clockwise and forward. Scoping, you don't, I'll be asking you to put gloves on. What I wanted to do to you is show you 
that you don't need one this, two, I've got grease on my hands and it's, and it's slippy, but it's better to have a slippy scope than to have a scope that's very dry. So if it was your bottom, how much of this do you want on it? If I was putting a scope in your bottom, do you want this amount? Or do you want lots? Lots. So what I'm saying to you is, is that when we're actually scoping, right, I don't care about that. Watch, I can rotate the scope. Because I use this. Actually, having a bit of grease on your hands, for me, I'm not asking you to change. I want, I want to demonstrate so that when you go along, you can actually do things. So, here we are coming to a part of the bowel. I like a bit of grease on the fingers. I'm going to do this on purpose. This is a part of the bowel. It now becomes difficult. I'm putting a lot of tension on the bowel. What's my fingers just done? Now, I've gone in. I've hit the wall. I've got grease. What's my fingers just done? Have slipped. Yeah, slipped. So what happens is that actually helps you, stops you perforating, because you can actually go forward and it allows the finger. So if you actually go in and you find a lot of resistance, the fingers will slip. There are times you do need to advance, and that's when you get experience. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is there is an advantage to doing it. It's better, better to be safe. Better to be safe, but do what we want you to do is scope the way you would normally scope. At this point, I would suck. So you suck on down. Can you uh, do I this angle, please? Do the, this angle. I've done it. I'm in the mid transverse. So can you explain it again? Anti clockwise. Okay. So you come forward rather than clockwise. If you go clockwise, you will disappear underneath. Right? So we come down. As it goes forward, if you could just step back just a fraction. Your shoulders are in the way, boys. I'm looking at that one. Right. Point at 12 o'clock. You see how much you're sucking down. Right? And then advance, and then let the scope come round. This is a mannequin, so it is catching and sticking. Can you see here? Now you're push, pulling here, the mesentery. You don't want to do that. A little bit of torque, pulls it round. Let it come round. Let it come round, let the torque come in, and then you'll find that when you actually come up here, the scope will actually start to straighten, and then bring it back. As it comes back, you'll see the lumen come into view, then you can go forward. Yeah? As you come back now, you'll see the lumen come into view, and then you can go forward. All the time, it's go forward, come back, go forward, come back. It's not completely committing to one manoeuvre or the other. Anti-clockwise, because I want it anti-clockwise. Big wheel's going forward. Neutralise your little wheel, because you'll always end up catching this silly thing. And now you'll see that it wants to come up. As it comes round, you'll see there, the lumens come into view. Bring it back to clockwise, and then draw back, and the whole thing will shorten. And then if you wanted them to actually be successful, change the position of the patient, draw back again, and then you can go forward. Scope itself will actually advance. Yeah. Now I haven't got any pressure at all on the abdomen, I wouldn't want to. And then you can see it pushing out of the sigmoid. As soon as you feel any bits of pressure, draw back the scope. See how much you're coming out with the scope? How much we've got? How much is there? 45 centimetres. How much is here? Where's the tip of the scope? So a lot of you are in and you're saying 45 centimetres and you're still here. I'm saying to you, you can often get to the cecum at 60. If I want to get round this, I would actually put this patient in this position. And the reason for that, it opens up the splenic flexion. You've got to be mindful because this is Pakistan and moving ladies around can be a little bit more compromising. So I wouldn't want to actually move a lot of ladies around in th these positions. I try to actually be as successful as I can in one position or the other.
Yeah? I can see through you. I can actually see the scope in your glasses. I was actually scoping from the reflection in your glasses. Because <laughs> I couldn't see the screen. Right, so can you see what we're doing? Now we should be roughly at the hepatic flexure. If we draw back a little bit more, you'll see it come into view. As a result of that, let's put the patient back onto the back. And then to open up the hepatic, we put the patient back into the left lateral as it comes round. So can you see the bonus of actually moving patients around? Yeah? I'm not a great fan of abdominal pressure. But I would be grateful of someone with a, a piece of skin over his stomach. And there you go. And it's done. So all you've seen is a, a demonstration of what to do. What I'm saying to you is, who's the first hands up candidate? Who's, hand, who's candidates? You one? Hands on? Who else? Yeah. Okay. We've got a lady as well. She's been very quiet. I can see her out the corner of my eye. So, in where I come from, it's ladies before gents. Yeah. So what I've shown you and I've demonstrated is how it can be done. Any questions? When you reach the clinic, like you put the patient on his back. Is it necessary to put the patient on his back? I put the patient on the back so everybody could see. To negotiate the splenic flexure, I actually put the patient in the right lateral. Right. No, so is it necessary to change the position? Or on the mannequin, it was. On the mannequin it was. No, or in real life here, I, if you see me scope, I will proceed as much as I can in the left lateral. And particularly if I've got ladies, and ever since coming here, it, you know, I will actually make sure they're well covered. The other thing is, is in this country, where in compared to the UK, in the UK, ladies or gents, I will reveal this amount. Here, I won't. I'll actually scope with the blanket here, and my hand here. So with that in mind, you've got that amount of scope between you and the anus. So it does change how you scope a little bit. And it does make it a little bit more difficult because if we've got the scope here and we're going in a straight line, how many of you do rigid sigmoidoscopy? Rigid siggy, rigid siggy, rigid siggy, rigid. Rigid? No, no? Yeah, but in clinic, do you do rigids? I did it twice. I know you. I've only done it twice. You don't, you know. Okay, right. If you were to put a rigid sigmoidoscope into this patient, which direction would you put it in? Yeah. Would you put it in like this? No. no. Right. And the reason for that is that's the direction it's going. So why on earth does everybody else, when they scope, let the hands drift here and let the hands drift here, right? So let's look at it. We've got the scope. I let, watch the tip. I let my hand drift forward. I let my hand drift back. I let my hand drift down. I let my hand drift up. Keep it level, keep it in the direction. Keeps the scope going in the direction you want. If I have to do this, this is where it happens to the scope. If I let my hand come forward, if I let my hand go, yeah. Does that help? Okay, so coming out, I have a sheet, make sure they're covered. So in particular in the ladies, make sure you've got a straight scope. So I don't hold the scope like I would do in the UK. I hold the scope here with the finger down the back. The reason why I put the finger down the back, it stops it. In the UK, I hold it like this because I can be here. Here, I put my finger here. So you need to adapt what you've got for the purposes you've got. All yours. Okay, thank you. Would you like? 